Now, how many of you out there like to hunt swamp islands when you're deer hunting? I personally love hunting swamp islands. I hunt a lot of public land and I have found that, especially in these public land scenarios, the swamp islands that I'm looking for have one beautiful thing in common and that is they're difficult enough access, it's marshy enough, wet enough to where it keeps out a lot of other hunters. And if you guys have watched my other video on uh, three signs you found a public land paradise, you'll know that I love to wear hip boots into spots and or spots that require hip boots to get into them. And you know, oftentimes I'm looking for those terrain features, those barriers to other hunters. And you know, nothing against those other hunters, but I just like hunting alone. I like being by myself. And oftentimes in the in the parts of the state where I hunt those swamp islands do just that they keep a lot of the other hunters out there let's face it it's tough to get into them but if i can throw on a pair of hip boots and get back in there that's going to eliminate a whole lot of other hunters and and it's going to give me that chance to be by myself the second thing that swamp islands do that uh, is really appealing to me is it's they create a, a scenario of cover and conditions for whitetails where they're very remote and very secluded. You know, oftentimes these uh, swamp islands are the most remote or secluded spots in a given area. And just by default as humans, we don't like going down into swamps. Think of in the summertime, they're full of mosquitoes. Uh, they're, they're just kind of gross to be in and around. They're full of weeds and it's hard to get across them. It's tough going in them. Uh, but for a whitetail, that secluded woods in the swamp island is just exactly what they're looking for to get away from all of us humans throughout the entire year. So that's one of the other things that I really like about them is that because they're so secluded that oftentimes that oldest age class of bucks in your area is going to be using those swamp islands and you know depending on the level of uh, human intrusion in your area it, it's probably year round, you know, that oldest uh, bracket of ages in your buck herd are going to be using those swamp islands just because of that secluded nature. And, you know, in addition to that, uh, at these swamp island locations, uh, you're going to find a lot of transition cover, a lot of edge and diversity. Oftentimes, uh, you'll, you'll get some, some cool conifers and pines up on top of these, maybe some big popple trees and around the edges you'll get sort of this ring of you know brush uh, alder as you transition down into the swamp into that moist soil condition you get these uh, you know alder rings and bucks love to rub those alders and and sometimes on aerial photos when you zoom out you can even you can even look down and see the kind of those deer trails weaving in and out of these swamp islands like the spokes on a, a bike tire coming out of the hub you know, you'll, you'll see these trails coming in, kind of spider webbing out of this swamp island. And uh, it, it's just, it's that transition cover that whitetails love and crave. It's, it's edge, it's bedding, and it just has a whole host of reasons why uh, those deer want to come into it. You know, you, you think about it, it's a, it's a, a confining feature that uh, really achieves that hourglass effect that confluence of movement effect that we're really looking for you know I, I talk about in my other videos you, you know don't just look for a spot in the big woods or on public land just you know essentially by throwing a dart at the map there needs to be a reason for those deer to go through there M one of my favorite scenarios or conditions is where you know we're, we're connecting those dots those doe zone to doe zone and that swamp island is in the middle you know think of a Think of a backside of an ag field of some sort over here, and then you have the swamp island in the middle, and thick swamp, brushy cover, stick swamp all around it, and then over here, let's say you have a, a big clear cut back, a, a big uh, popple cutting over here somewhere, pine plantation maybe. You have a lot of um, young uh, diversity of regrowth coming, early successional growth in this clear cut, and then out here in this ag field, you have a really hot primary food source. You know, and then maybe in between there's a great big swamp. You can envision a scenario where those deer are, are going from point A to point B and they're using that swamp island as that connecting feature. It's bringing those trails, those deer trails, into a, a confluence of movement at that 
swamp island and in you know in a big woods setting you can relate this to say you know clear cut over here clear cut over here and big swamp in the middle well we know that those big clear cuts are going to act as doe zones the does are going to be feeding in there on the bud densities and they're going to be uh, bedding in these locations and because of that we've identified a doe zone and a doe zone and those bucks are going to be satelliting back and forth between those clear cuts and they're going to use that swamp island to get through that swamp they're going to come up onto it i find a lot of primary scrapes on these swamp islands uh, just a lot of rubs and these swamp islands just serve as that confining uh, concentrating feature um, you know that that's the big woods scenario there's another scenario where swamp islands come into play and that is on the back side of a primary food source so go back to the example of a, an egg field over here maybe it's a corn field maybe it's a big food plot if you have a big swamp up against that red hot that primary food source and then you have a swamp island that high ground dome out in that swamp of some sort a lot of the does are going to be bedding back on that swamp island during the day and then going out to that primary food source in the evening. Now in that condition it could be really easy to spook something like that out if you go in there in the middle of the day which I would not recommend. Again this is the scenario of a primary food source right here, an egg field, food plot, hay field, something like that and the swamp island right next to it. In that case you got to get in there before first light. I would get in there pretty early, even a half hour to an hour before first light. Let the woods calm down, let the woods quiet down. And you can hunt that, you know, that's the kind of spot you can hunt well into the morning, late into the morning, even through the midday time frame. And then towards the evening, those deer are going to make their way out to the, the food source. Now, switching back to the big woods setting, where you have, let's say, a clear cut over here and a clear cut over here and just swamp and woods everywhere else. You know, that's really an all day sit kind of location, a swamp island in that condition. Again, that big woods condition. And those bucks are gonna be going, you know, during the pre-rut, even through the rut, into the post rut, they're gonna be going back and forth from that clear cut to clear cut. Or maybe it's that young pine plantation of bedding over here, that doe zone over here and then a clear cut over here. If that swamp island is in between the two, it's going to serve as that go between from point A to point B. Again, we're connecting those dots, we're connecting those doe zones with that swamp island. And the best, probably the best possible scenario for a swamp island is if it's long and skinny. And I actually shot a beautiful buck, 153 inch buck with my bow using this tactic and it was a long skinny swamp island. I had a reason for de deer to be over here and over here and I was on that long skinny swamp island connecting those two features. It just worked out perfectly. Public land hunt and um, those are the kinds of things I'm looking for when I'm going out after these swamp islands. I was the only guy back there. Again for those reasons that it was really difficult to access you needed uh, boots to get back in there and it was really thick alder getting back into this location. One of the other things I'll mention that those swamp islands do is they give you an opportunity uh, oftentimes for very clean access in and very clean access out. And you know, I've, I've kind of talked about two different scenarios here. There's a big wood swamp island application and then there's a food source oriented application. And in the case of that big woods application where it's just vast stretches of cover, you're in a swamp island in between point A and point B, doe zone A, doe zone B, you can get in typically without being detected by deer and you can get out without being detected by deer most of the time. Now back to that example where you have a food plot or an egg field over here there you can easily get busted and that's why I recommend getting in well before first light if your swamp island is near a food source you gotta get in there early and sit well late into the morning or into the early afternoon when those deer are on their way out and then you can make a clean exit out of that swamp island I would not be going back into that swamp island in that uh, food oriented condition 
I would not be going back in there uh, you know in the midday because you're going to be spooking deer off of it. This is a tactic that I use that's really effective for me and I know a lot of guys use this tactic. It's a place where you can run a mock scrape and you know you get oftentimes you get up on top of these swamp islands and you'll see these conifer pat, uh, pockets you know maybe some open grassy pockets perfect spots for you know a mock scrape you'll probably even see some perennial natural scrapes in these locations and again you're looking for that confluence of movement that hourglass effect of trails coming together at that swamp island and then coming back out fanning back out into the swamp and those are the types of places that bucks love to leave, uh, love to scrape. They love to leave their sign with rubs. And uh, it's a perfect place to key in and run your trail camera on those mock scrapes. And to top all this off, it, that restricting or confining feature that it creates, so that confluence of movement, gives you an opportunity for stand locations. It's going to be positioning those deer right in front of you in you know if you're a bow hunter it that means you'll be able to get that 20 25 yard shot 30 yard shot and if you're a gun hunter same thing um, you, you know you can stretch that range out as a gun hunter but uh, you know again in the big woods conditions you need some type of feature to constrain that movement right in front of your deer stand and swamp islands do just that they're the perfect uh, geological or geographic feature to funnel those deer right in front of you and you know as hunters that's a big part of this game it's not just knowing where deer trails are it's not just having uh, you know being in an area of deer it's the art of getting that deer right in front of you that's a big part of all this and those swamp islands do just that and like I said oftentimes it's that oldest age class of bucks that's out in those swamp islands just because of the nature of them, how quiet and, and secluded they are. So this spring, it's January right now when I'm filming this video, but I have a couple other swamp islands penciled in on my, on my list of spots that I wanna go check out this spring. You can bet that I'll be out there. I'm gonna be looking for things like rubs, trails. I'm gonna be looking for that, that hourglass effect of trails coming into them. I'm gonna be looking for that doe zone over here, that doe zone over here, and I'm gonna be finding those swamp islands that are a connecting feature, uh, you know, from point A to point B on those deer trails. And it's a, it's a strategy I love. You can bet that I'll be out there this spring. I hope you guys get out there. I hope you find some swamp islands in the areas that you guys hunt. Let me know what you think about it down below in the chat. And uh, I'd be happy to discuss with you down there some of your strategy. I wanna hear from you guys what your plans are for this coming season. And uh, so I'll, I'll leave it at that. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Until next time, take care.